Is it their eyes? Their fur? Or simply, their moves? No matter what it is, face it, they're irresistible. It's time to catch up with some of the freshest faces that we share our world with. From sunrise to sunset, be immersed in their lives. Mingle with these youngsters and get to know them and their families better. Experience all the hustle and bustle of their daily routines, all while getting up close to these baby animals in our world. Our day is being spent exploring some of the urban environments, catching up with the baby animals that make their homes in and around our neighbourhoods. Coming up, don't miss this bundle of energy having a blast working on its tightrope walking skills. What a talented baby! Plus, this youngster's having a ball ferreting around a driving range. Hit the streets to join some inner-city foodies for some extra wild, fine dining. <laughs> Cities are often referred to as concrete jungles. And with urban sprawl on the rise, it's no surprise that more and more of our wilder neighbours are sharing our built environments. This intermingling of worlds has created a few changes in urban animals. Fewer predators and better food supplies means metropolitan life is a bit easier. So, compared to their country cousins, urban animals are often larger and in better condition. Just like inner-city humans have learned to live in smaller housing, so too have many creatures, downsizing their homes and their territories. For instance, a city fox has to compete with about 14 other animals in the same amount of territory a rural fox has all to itself. Researchers have also discovered urban rabbit burrows are more compact and house fewer animals than those seen in the country. The urban landscape may be the last place we expect to come across wildlife and their babies. But these chance encounters are a pleasant reminder that we share our cityscapes with furry, feathery and scaly neighbours. So, time to explore the urban jungle and get face to face with some of the youngest wilder residents. In cities and towns right around the globe, sunlight is streaming down. Waking up all of the urbanites, humans and animals alike. What a view to rise and shine to. As impressive as it is, this cheeky youngster is more interested in the snack in Mum's hand. Elsewhere, a family of Langer monkeys are also a bit peckish this morning. Down in the thick of things, a stray kitten is on the prowl, warming itself up on a sunny ledge. But not everyone is waking up, though. On the edge of town, a family of badgers are heading for home after their nightly forage. Up in a roadside tree, some fluffy bald eagle chicks are eagerly waiting for their mother to return with some breakfast. 
Their high nest makes a good lookout for these hungry babies. At the edge of a well-known park, a deer fawn is carefully sniffing the greens on offer. Looks like it prefers to hang out in the longer grass. A hare is being a bit braver, leaving the edge to nibble on the sprouts from a lawn that's just been top-dressed with fresh soil. Meanwhile, in a botanical garden, a juvenile water monitor is taking things easy, going for an early morning dip. Such an active way to start the day. Now that everyone's up and about, bring on breakfast. These does and their fawns are having a quiet graze, while in the streets above, a local cafe is serving both two and four-legged customers. Healthy grains are on the menu for the deer this morning. They're like vacuum cleaners, gobbling up this feast. The breakfast traffic is ancillary to ancillary around here. Elsewhere, a troop of Langer monkeys are enjoying their first meal of the day out in the garden. These old world monkeys are able to live in a diverse range of habitats, including urban areas, due to their versatile diet, which includes things like seeds, fallen fruit and nuts. Langer monkeys are known for being very territorial, especially over their food. A lesson this youngster and its tail have just learned. These two youngsters are being much more considerate, taking turns drinking from the tap. Regardless of the species, food is worth fighting for. This dove is not sharing. Swooping in for a bite, this latecomer doesn't seem to understand the pecking order around here. The alpha dove is not afraid to pass on the message. Metropolitan neighbourhoods can be like all-you-can-eat buffets for animals that find themselves in the right place at the right time. This cheeky youngster is helping itself to some leftover omelette. Nothing better than a protein hit for a growing chipmunk. Being omnivores, eggs are a natural part of their diet. They're just not usually cooked and served on a plate. It's got great table manners, though. Such a neat eater. What's breakfast without a bit of cereal? A glass full of oats is too tempting. Its little friend has found the perfect takeaway meal, all packaged up and ready to go. Why eat standing up when you can take a seat? It's amazing how much food they can stuff into those cheap pouches to hoard for later on. A forgotten lunchbox provides an unforgettable meal for this lucky ferret. On a doorstep, a baby rat is joining the rest of the pack that are busy sharing some milk from a pet's drinking bowl. Some other city dwellers that like to eat breakfast al fresco are coots. These birds are really enjoying their pickings at their local golf course. On another green, a pair of coot hatchlings are learning how to eat solids. After a bit of trial and error, success. Life in the city moves pretty fast. Sometimes hungry residents don't even have time to land while grabbing a quick bite to eat in the morning. With the breakfast rush out of the way, it's time for the urban babies to go exploring. Deer not only share this neighborhood, but also the roads. This doe seems to understand how to get her family safely across the road, keeping an eye out for traffic. Golfers aren't the only ones who enjoy a sunny walk. A hedgehog and her baby are out for a stroll in the rough.
hedgehogs are named after their grunts and their favourite foraging sites, hedges. The mother's headed out onto the putting green for a sniff. This prickly greenskeeper seems impressed with the state of the course. A driving range is getting a similar inspection from another furry golf fan. Ferrets instinctively collect and hide objects. But golf balls don't seem to be of any interest to this youngster. It looks like it's happy just to putter around. Time to check out the family album. First up, one of the world's most famous vocalists, the kookaburra. These birds are the largest of the kingfisher family and can be seen in suburban yards, plus public parks and gardens around Australia and New Zealand. Kookaburras are believed to pair for life. Couples nesting in large tree cavities where females lay clutches of two to four eggs. Both parents share incubation duties. After almost a month, the eggs start to hatch. Kookaburra chicks arrive in the world naked and blind. The parents, plus older chicks in the family, take turns to care for the young. By the time they're 40 days old, they're fledged and enjoying a carnivorous diet. Snakes are often on a kookaburra's menu. At just one year of age, kookaburras are fully mature and weigh around half a kilogram. These youngsters usually stay with their family group until they're a couple of years old. Also known as the laughing kookaburra, these birds are renowned for their loud calls that sound like human laughter. Usually heard at around dusk and dawn, their familiar sound makes for the perfect natural alarm clock. Next, some masked creatures, often seen roaming urban landscapes, raccoons. After a 65-day gestation period, female raccoons can give birth to up to five babies or kits in a den. Dens can range from tree hollows all the way to the attic space in a house. The newborns start to get their infamous black masks when they're about 20 days old. The kits stay in the den with their protective mothers until about the 10-week mark. They start to go on guided tours with her around their neighbourhood, then on to solo adventures. When the youngsters are just over a year old, they leave their mum and take on the wider world. Raccoons are very adaptable creatures, and being omnivores, their diet is wide and varied. These natural foragers are quick to get their paws on anything and everything that's edible, including the contents of garbage bins. City living definitely suits these ring-tailed animals. In urban areas, research shows that raccoon populations can be 20 times higher than in rural environments. for the urban babies to freshen up and have a bit of a morning groom. High on a rooftop, a stork is busily preening her feathers, showing her chick the best way to spruce up. In a pond, these cooch chicks are getting some similar beauty tips from their mother. It doesn't take them long to preen their short, colourful down, with mum close by to lend a helpful beak. While they're waiting for their turn, this pair are playing hide-and-seek in mum's wings. In just eight weeks, these little coots will become independent, and knowing how to look after their plumage is a valuable life skill. This little one's really getting into its beauty routine using one foot as a comb, a quick ruffle, then time to work on those back feathers. In exchange for a preen, 
This Batrian camel is happy to donate some furry nesting material to these crows. A winning partnership for all involved. Up in the trees, a spotted owlet is perfecting its pedicuring skills in this rustic ensuite. Lavender is always popular at bath time, even for a young praying mantis. Fascinating to see how flexible these neat little insects are. Grooming is a family affair at this European badger's home. They've come up out of their burrow or set to put some light on the subject. Their cubs are really getting into the spirit of things as their mother spring cleans her furry coat, getting rid of any annoying parasites. Such helpful babies. One urban creature that really knows how to take mornings at a relaxed pace is the swan. Let's take some time out to cruise around with these attractive waterfowl. Worldwide, there are six species of swans. With its telltale orange beak, this is an adult mute swan, named for their less vocal nature. While fairy tales often talk about baby swans being less than attractive, cygnets are very appealing not only for their fuzzy grey down, but their adorable antics, like their habit of piggybacking. <coughs> Nothing like a free ride. Cygnets swan around with their very protective parents for up to nine months, learning how to dabble from the best, using their bills to filter out tasty bits of aquatic vegetation. Eventually, the cygnet's necks will grow and allow them to reach down to the bottom of lakes or ponds. After a long paddle, this family's come ashore for a graze, then a well-earned break in the clover. In cities around the world, Tall buildings often host the nests of peregrine falcons. In the wild, these birds of prey nest on cliffs and mountains. Making the switch to towers of concrete and stone is a fairly simple adaptation. Getting a glimpse of their babies is a challenge, though as they usually build their nests out of sight on high ledges off towers, bridges and skyscrapers. Cameras set up by bird watchers allow us into their world to watch how their lives unfold from the very start. Peregrine falcons pair for life, and it all begins when a female lays a clutch of three to four eggs. For a month, the male and female take turns incubating the eggs. When the chicks hatch, the adults continue to share their parenting duties, taking turns to hunt for their hungry brood. Falcon hatchlings are called iasses and come into the world at about 56 grams. That's roughly the same as half a deck of playing cards. Over the next three to five weeks, the Iasis' white fluffy down is replaced with juvenile feathers. When they're about a month and a half old, the fledglings begin to test their wings. At 10 weeks of age, these youngsters are able to hunt for themselves. In no time, these young peregrines will be soaring and diving through the air at speeds greater than 300 kilometers per hour. Peregrines can cruise urban skies for about 15 years.
birds aren't the only creatures that can grace the skies of a city. But these flighty creatures are a little less conspicuous than most of their feathered friends. Blink and you'll usually miss them. But the patient observer will be treated to a spectacular display when these petite mammals are in action. These tiny creatures are microbats with a wingspan of about 25 centimeters. These leathery-winged mammals sometimes use large stormwater pipes like they would caves. Microbats come into the world blind and furless, usually spending their first few days riding around with their mothers. But these youngsters have had a rough start in life. Luckily, they found themselves in the experienced hands of bat carers. By the time they're six weeks old, these rescued babies will be able to take to the skies for themselves. They might be small, but these little creatures have a huge role to play in our built environment. These helpful bats are natural pest controllers, gobbling up harmful and destructive pests such as weevils, lawn grub moths and mosquitoes. In fact, a single microbat can apparently feast on more than 500 insects in just one hour. Quite the appetite for such small, delicate beings. With the sun at its peak, the urban animals take that as a cue to have a break. A tired group of goslings has chosen a sunny bank for their catnap. So have these cygnets. A juvenile water monitor is also taking a siesta by the water. Its friend has chosen to bask on a cosy rock instead. Midday is like midnight for nocturnal animals, but a grey fox pup can't resist sneaking up from its den to catch a bit of sun before going back to bed. A young badger's had the same idea. Why rest underground when there's warm grass to doze on? Up in their nest, the wind is gently rocking the bald eagle chicks off to sleep. Living close to the beach means these gull chicks have the sound of lapping waves to help them drift off, safely under mom's watchful eyes. Some other Surfside residents are also busy taking their power nap. These sea lion pups are having a quick suckle before they grab some shut eye. What better way to wrap up a long, busy morning than with a relaxing snooze, surrounded by family and friends? In urban landscapes around the world, the baby animals are up and about, looking for fun. Bring on playtime! Down by the beach, this little flock of party animals are playing hide-and-seek this afternoon. It's the perfect game for gull chicks. Their natural camouflage making it easy for them to hide from predators and each other. These two haven't been found, making them the winners. While the post-lunch traffic races by, the macaques are splashing out putting on a pool party in this water feature. Some of the bravest are diving in from the fence. Cheeky monkeys. A grey fox mum has brought her pups up from the den for a quick round of follow the leader. They've played the game so well, they've won a prize. A warm drink. 
Meanwhile, a baby langa monkey is having a blast working on its tightrope walking skills. Whoops! Having opposable thumbs on your feet certainly comes in handy during playtime. Time to meet some high-flying commuters, Canadian geese. These large waterfowl are the original frequent flyers. Some flocks migrating three to 5,000 kilometers to escape the chill of winter and to raise their families. Some Canadian geese find these warmer urban neighborhoods such reliable homes they stay year-round. Canadian geese really appreciate well-kept lawns in parks and gardens. Firstly, because they're a convenient food source. And secondly, the trim grass makes it easy for the adults to keep a lookout for any incoming predators. At just one to two days of age, goslings are led into the water by their parents for swimming lessons. Babies are such quick learners, they can soon dive to depths of 10 meters or more. Goslings stay with their parents for their first year of life, spending their days browsing on greens, grains and insects. For these urban youngsters, life really is a walk in the park. Making sure the family is safe and sound is a big priority for animals, no matter where they live. But urban creatures are sport for choices when it comes to real estate. They truly can enjoy the best of both worlds, choosing traditional options or adapting the built environment to suit their own personal needs. This large customer is busy inspecting some new digs. Mine shafts are so on trend. Polecats also prefer underground mansions to house their families. And they're happy to live in new or second-hand burrows. Polecat babies are known as kits and are born with white fur. When they're three weeks old, these youngsters' coats will darken. After having a good sniff around, this family is sold. Some young urbanites enjoy a room with a view, like these grey-horned owl chicks. They're one of the most common owls found in the Americas. This one's having a hoot, stretching its growing wings in its spacious treetop apartment. It's afternoon tea time for these house sparrow chicks. No prizes for guessing where their name comes from. House sparrows are known to enjoy the company of humans and rarely stray far from urban landscapes. This kestrel has decided a planter box in suburbia is as good a home as any for her chicks. A mother seagull, however, only wants the best for her brood. Up in this penthouse suite, these babies are certainly living the high life. <laughs> Time to check out the Urban Family album. First up is an urban baby native to East Asia, the Sika deer. Sika means small in Japanese. So it's no surprise these petite creatures are also known as Japanese deer. Sika does give birth to a single fawn after a gestation period of 30 weeks. At birth, these spotty babies weigh five and a half kilograms on average. Fawns nurse for up to 10 months and rely on their caring mothers for up to a year. 
Seeker reach adulthood at around 18 months of age and eventually grow to tip the scales at about 42 kilograms. Although seeker deer are distributed globally, they have a thriving population in Japan, especially in the city of Nara. Here, the seeker deer roam free through the city streets, attracting tourists from all over the world. These gentle animals have a long history here. It is believed that seeker deer have been wandering through the city for centuries and were considered a symbol of luck. In times past, if someone encountered a deer, they were expected to bow to them, a tradition that continues today. Locals are so used to them roaming the streets that snacks are available for the more persistent residents. Talk about excellent customer service. Next, a bird of prey that specializes in hovering, the kestrel. These falcons are often spotted perched on telephone posts or loitering above the highways like feathery helicopters, keeping an eye out for food. Kestrels lay their eggs in tree hollows, in disused nests, and sometimes even on the ledges of buildings. Clutches of eggs are incubated for about four weeks. While the mothers feed and care for the chicks, the fathers are on catering duty. When hunting, urban kestrels often commute to outer-lying districts in search of snacks like invertebrates, small rodents and birds. By the time they're a month old, the chicks are fledged and leave their parents, flying as far away as 150 kilometers to set up their own territory. These small raptors can grace the skies with their impressive aerial skills for about 10 years. Let's take a trek to the island of Bali to meet some creatures that enchant locals and tourists alike. This temple is home to a troop of rhesus monkeys. It's a special place that encourages peace and harmony between humans and animals. Temples and sanctuaries like this exist all around the world, opening doors for research and conservation programs to better understand and protect these engaging primates. This baby's patiently waiting while its mother gets groomed. All done. So many nooks and crannies for young, curious minds to explore. A family of langa monkeys are having a great time this afternoon, bounding around the artworks that decorate their home. These primates are often seen hanging around ancient temples in India, where they are considered holy as well as helpful, acting like security guards and scaring off pests. A pair of infants have got these steps and their mums all to themselves. This stairwell is a bit more popular, a good spot for the troop to do a bit of sunbathing. Time for a ride around the grounds. Upside down is the funnest way to travel. Such lovely long tails. Elsewhere, this macaque is taking advantage of her baby's long tail to keep it in check while she's being groomed. Living in urban areas gives curious baby macaques lots of options when it comes to activities like rock climbing and feather collecting. These little ones have found a fascinating see-through chew toy it will clearly entertain them for hours.
Urban habitats are home to a variety of creatures, some that were once domestic, but are now wild feral animals. This afternoon, something very exciting is brewing. A female feral cat has found somewhere safe and warm to bring her babies into the world. A special moment. Mother cats, or queens, give birth to four or five kittens in a litter. The time between babies arriving being anything from 15 minutes to an hour. While licking and nuzzling her babies, she gently guides them to her nipples so they can take their first meal. The entire birth process usually takes around two to six hours. After that, she will spend the majority of her time nursing. Now that the kittens are cleaned and fed and familiar with their new home, it's time for a cat nap for the whole family. Let's take an afternoon cruise to the beaches of Western Australia to meet some of the locals. Australian sea lions. These rare sea lions can be seen here year round hauling up onto the beaches to sun themselves on the dunes. This pup is sneaking in a suckle while its mum rests. Females, or cows, will nurse their young until they are about a year old. Down in the shallows, this pair are enjoying an afternoon dip in their very own paddling pool. Being members of large colonies, Australian sea lions are very social often hanging out with friends and family in smaller subgroups of 10 to 15 animals. Sea lions can easily be differentiated from seals by looking at their ears. They have ear flaps on the sides of their head, while true seals don't. Sea lions are also known as walking seals, using their front flippers to move along on land like these energetic youngsters are kindly demonstrating. Looks like the pups are gathering for a round of hide-and-seek. Out of the water, they have an excellent sense of smell, which should make this a quick game. Sea lions are just as agile below the waterline, using their long flippers like oars to help them zoom along. Many snorkelers are drawn to these beaches in order to watch these underwater show-offs in action. While searching for fish and squid, these marine mammals are able to dive to depths of 300 meters. Impressive. City neighbourhoods all around the world are home to these popular urban inhabitants. Doves. Doves will mate for life and females almost always lay two eggs at a time. Chicks hatch after about 18 days, weighing a mere six grams. At the 10-day mark, they're covered with their first layer of feathers. Dove chicks leave the nest when they're about two weeks old receiving flying lessons down on the ground from their parents. By the time they're three weeks old, these little aviators are ready to take on the world solo. Doves and pigeons are often mistaken for each other, which makes sense than both being from the same family. But doves are actually slightly smaller with longer tails. Throughout history, Humans and doves have shared a special relationship. For centuries, these birds were used to deliver messages, 
Doves were able to carry out this highly valued service thanks to their natural ability to fly hundreds of kilometers away from their home base, but instinctively find their way back. In many places around the world, it's the resident animals that often act as draw cards. Here in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, the cheeky macaques are tourist favorites. Under adult supervision, even the babies are bold enough to have a close encounter with this two-legged visitor. Smaller mammals are just as brave. Why search for seeds and nuts when someone else has done the hard work already? Sometimes, more exotic foods are on offer for these mini gourmets to try. Savoury or sweet. Such tough choices. This chipmunk's hit the mother load. A feeder box all to itself. Having chance encounters with urban wildlife create memorable moments for both parties. Fascinating to see an owl chick up so close. Nearby, inside a garden shed, another rare sight. A cosy nest of baby squirrels. Cities certainly are full of wild surprises. Urban parks and gardens are worlds unto themselves. Hidden in amongst the greenery, countless mini city dwellers go about their daily lives. This afternoon, a chance to watch the life cycle of a praying mantis right from the start. Females lay between 100 to 400 eggs on firm leaf stems or branches, securing them in place with a frothy liquid that hardens to form a protective case. When conditions are warm enough, the egg cases crack and the babies start to hatch. Baby praying mantis are referred to as nymphs and will stay in close proximity of the egg case, feeding on small insects. As they develop, nymphs go through stages called instars, during which they molt or shed their old exoskeleton so they can increase their body size. Nymphs will molt about six times before reaching adolescence. These teenage insects are a lot larger than nymphs, but still have some growing to do. Finally, they reach the adult stage. Mature praying mantis can measure up to 15 centimeters in length, depending on the species. These intriguing creatures also differ in color, according to their habitat. Ranging from greens to pinks, their natural camouflage makes it easier for them to sneak up on tasty snacks and avoid becoming one themselves. The day's getting along. Let's spend a bit more of it with the Canadian geese. Their afternoon schedule looks pretty hectic, with lots of swimming on the agenda. Those little feet are keeping up with a fast pace set by their instructor. Looks like they're working on more advanced moves, like U-turns. It's smooth sailing all the way for these goslings. Some of these downy babies have already gone ashore to dry off and rest. The fading light is like a silent dinner bell calling the hungry flocks to graze. With full stomachs, it's now bedtime. The goslings are happy to tuck themselves in and drift off under the ever-watchful eyes of their parents.
As the shadows get longer, more urban animals are heading for their home bases to find something to nibble on or drink from before settling in for the night. It's always nice to snuggle up with family and friends. Down by the beach, a colony of sea lions are searching for the perfect place to rest. Winding down on the warm rocks after a busy day, enjoying the colorful sunset. day is just beginning as it prepares to set out in search of a meal. It's not the only night owl. Perched on a power pole, a lone monkey watches as the moon slowly rises into the night sky, signalling the end of another busy day for the urban animals in our world. <laughs>